not going to believe this. Yeah, we're, we're sinking uh, water, water on a vessel. Irene, it's sinking. Uh, the diesel is apparently sheared a shaft and been on water. 50% of vessels lost at sea sink because of uncontrolled flooding. Hey, Skipper, we have some flooding down here. Send Bill to give me a hand. To control flooding will save your catch, your vessel, and the lives of your crew. Hey, Skipper, we slowed down the leak. The thing to remember is if you have a flooding problem, you might have this problem for, for an hour, you might have it for six hours, you know. But once that boat, you know, starts to sink, you might have 30 seconds. Inspect potential flooding sources with a critical eye monthly and maintain as needed. Turn valves to ensure they are not stuck open. Each through hull fitting should have two corrosion resistant hose clamps. In all watertight spaces, test high water alarms monthly. Tether an appropriate size softwood plug to each through hull opening so it is readily available. Place an eye for line in the tapered end of the plug so the wide end can be hammered into place. Maintain emergency dewatering pumps in operable condition. When underway, inspect the bilge at regular intervals and include packing glands, rudder stocks, hatch cover and door seals, and through hull connections. Keep your through hull fittings close to the hull and shut off valves accessible. Think about how you could reach areas that may be prone to flooding and the benefits of being able to remotely close valves. Be thoroughly familiar with your vessel. This is critical to locating the source of flooding quickly. Make it easier by having valves and pipes clearly marked and pipes color-coded. Problem is, is I have through-hole fittings everywhere. Talk to your surveyor about potential problems and flooding prevention specific to your vessel. You might think about the next time you get hauled out to install a sea chest where you can concentrate some of those, some of your piping and make it more accessible for everybody. A voluntary Coast Guard fishing vessel exam can also be worthwhile. All crew should be reminded to close doors, hatches, windows, and vents. Ensure bulkheads below deck are watertight. In undamaged spaces, keep your watertight spaces watertight to limit flooding. Roll the duct tape. Okay. No, no, no. Keep a damage control kit in every space where flooding is likely to occur. You should have a station bill of emergency procedures that your crew has practiced in case of a flooding problem. This includes preparing survival equipment. Be prepared with a properly outfitted damage control kit and practice crew duties during your monthly emergency drills. This is a flooding drill. Everyone get to your stations. Hey, there's a hole in the rudder post. Bring me something to plug it. If you are taking on water, there are five steps that should be taken simultaneously and should involve all crew members. Assessing the type of damage will help determine your course of action. Locate and control the source of flooding. At the same time, start up the pumps. A plug, even if imperfect, may slow a leak enough for the pumps to keep up. Crew members should be assigned to put all dewatering bilge and hand pumps into operation. A bilge pump is not designed to pump large amounts of water. You may be hours from Coast Guard or other assistance. Invest in a large capacity emergency dewatering pump. It can be a good supplement to your normal array of 12 volt 120 volt belt driven and hydraulic pumps. Be sure the dewatering pump has sufficient intake hose to reach any potential flooded area of the vessel from the deck.
fishing vessel Cherokee. We've got Be sure to communicate your situation to the Coast Guard and to other nearby vessels. Latitude 136 degrees. Follow your station bill of emergency procedures for flooding and prepare for abandoning the vessel if necessary. Ensure that the crew trying to control flooding avoids electrocution or entrapment if the vessel sinks. Conical soft wood plugs and wedges are the simplest ways to make a temporary repair in something such as a through-hole fitting. This is a rapid response. Wrap each plug and wedge with lightweight cloth to fill in gaps. Use a hatchet to make proper size wedges and fill spaces with oakum and rags. If plugs are used in a low pressure pipe, trim the wedges off along the outside surface of the pipe. If the problem is a cracked pipe, and if time allows, first drill out the ends of the crack so it does not split further. Wrap the pipe with a piece of rubber that extends at least two inches beyond the ends of the damage. Allow a 1 8 inch gap where the rubber meets so that it will close when compressed. Take twine or wire and wind tightly, starting in the middle. Then go two inches past one end. Then overlap. Then go two inches past the other end of the rubber. Overlap and go back to the center and tie it off. How's it look? Soft patch is complete, Skipper. I believe we're ready to get underway. Good job. Soft patches are not effective where there are damages in sharp bends or in flammable fuel lines where a slight leak can create a fire hazard. Use emergency tape in these situations. Grease tape also makes a quick emergency repair. There are several other types of emergency wraps on the market. Underwater epoxy can be helpful for filling in small holes or spaces. Use a hatchet to cut wooden wedges to size. Use thin cloth to wrap around wedges and oakum to fill in gaps. Drive in wedges, but not with a force that will increase the gap. Pillows, clothing, and mattresses can be used to plug holes. Shoring will be needed to hold patches in place. Tubifores, forbifores, or bin boards can make good shoring material. Wedges should be rough cut soft wood so they will absorb water and be less likely to slip. Wedges should always be used in pairs. Measure the distance between the repair and a strong point for the shoring material. Cut it a half inch short to make room for the wedges. The angle of the shore to the repair should be as close to 90 degrees as possible for maximum strength. If two shores are used, the angle between the two shores should be no more than 90 degrees. Cut two angles in the end of a shoring plank to match the corner it will be shored up against. Cutting just one angle will leave a sharp point on the shoring plank, which will curl and slip and work the shore loose. Drive wedges in, a pair at a time, to make firm. Set a shoring watch. A leak in an inaccessible place in the hull may be made smaller by working a tarp under the hull. Use weighted or sinking lines at all four corners to father it into place around obstacles such as keel coolers and transducers. People should not go over the side to position the tarp. Water pressure will hold the tarp against the hull, slowing the intake of water. This is just a stopgap measure until a more secure patch can be made. 
Be aware that a tarp will be a problem while underway, especially in rough seas. For every foot the leak is deeper in the water, 10 to 20% more gallons of water per minute will enter the vessel. Healing the vessel to the opposite side of the leak may slow the leak by reducing the water pressure. However, this should only be done if it doesn't reduce stability. Flooding at sea often can be prevented with good maintenance and attention to hull integrity. The U.S. Coast Guard has damage control training trailers in many coastal locations where you can practice your skills. Contact the Coast Guard to schedule damage control training with your crew. Flooding is the cause of 50% of fishing vessel losses at sea. Regular maintenance is key to preventing flooding. Familiarize yourself with your vessel's plumbing systems and mark them for easy recognition. Practice emergency drills and assign all crew members specific duties in case of flooding. Plug the hole. Even an imperfect plug will slow the leak enough to give you a chance for your pumps to work. Close doors and hatches and preserve your remaining watertight integrity. Pump with everything at your disposal. Think of ways to boost your pumping capacity. Put together a damage control kit for your vessel and ensure that the crew is familiar with its contents in use. Remember, these are just temporary repairs. Permanent repairs should be made as soon as possible. Until they are made, keep in contact with rescue resources and be prepared to abandon ship if flooding suddenly gets out of control again. With knowledge and preparation, you can save your boat and the lives of your crew in a flooding emergency.